Hey guys, SlySonic7 here, and we are back right at the cutscene after the world started to restore itself. Chip is saying Gar Dark Gaia will be gone, my work will be done. Chip has revealed himself, by the way, throughout just various cutscenes and other talks we've had, as the kind of opponent to Dark Gaia, Light Gaia, because they're so creative with the titles in this game. Um, basically, his job is to make sure that Dark Gaia does not control the world and darkness doesn't overtake the world. The second that Gaia can be silenced and subdued and put to rest for eons, not killed, but just put to rest, then his work is done. So right now, Chip thinks, last, planet, last continent is coming down. We should be all good. The planet has been restored. Everything is working out perfectly. But, as Tails is going to be talking with the professor right now, everything seems like it's awesome right now. Um, I actually really like the little touch of having, like, the, like, you know, video conferencing, like, on his, you know, quote-unquote iPad or, you know, his controller, um, you know, while he's on the plane there. Um, you know, while the quality of that looks worse than the rest of the game, still an interesting touch to be showing, like, a video conversation like that. I think it's pretty cool. But, oh no! Um, something just went wrong here, and as we're clearly seeing, for the thought of you know, hey, we just saved the world, everything should be all right. Everything doesn't feel perfectly all right. The sky is still really dark. We just saw the huge shake there. And now we feel this tremor. What, what's going on? Well, you yeah, you know, Chip, we totally felt that. What's going on, man? Like, uh, I don't know. Um, oh, now I see what's going on. It's Eggman. <laughs> Here for his revenge, quite pissed off at us for what we've done. Looks like we're a bit too late. I How? We restored the continent. How are we too late? Oh, your technology. You restored Dark Gaia. Why would you do that? Wait, you, you took the energy of one of the strongest being, like known entities, probably in like the world slash universe. And you used it to make another mechanical toy for yourself. You didn't use it to, you know, enslave humanity or build a weapon that can beat everyone else or, you know, kill Sonic or anything in between. No, you just built another robot. And I think that's the issue with you, Eggman. You're just too, like, small picture. You, just, you can't see the big picture sometimes. So, guys, um, as I was kind of alluding to in the last episode, um, this is going to be the finale of our... Sonic Unleashed Let's Play. Um, we are going to have one episode after this that's just a post-game, like, here's other things just to see. But, um, this is going to be the last uh, episode of actual, like, story mode gameplay that, like, as we're going to beat the game. So a couple things to say. In this cutscene, right, for instance, Sonic just looks awesome. The fur is very tangible there. Eggman, you can see, like, the whiskers out on his mustache. Like, it looks pretty good, actually, as far as, like, you're having a lot going on with the background of you, like, lowering down. I think it's a pretty cool design. Um, so, guys, this episode is actually going to have three separate boss battles. And the final boss battle will be, as you can imagine, the end of the game. So, we're going to start off with Eggman. And then we're going to have two different ba boss battles against uh, two different enemies. So, it's going to be kind of an interesting time as we're going to get a couple different looks in this episode as we go. Um, this one, interestingly enough, whenever we've had the egg machines, it's always been, uh, you know, regular Sonic the Hedgehog against them. And I kind of like that they actually switched it up a little bit here, where now it's, uh, Werehog against, uh, one of the egg machines here to really show, like, more of, like, a physical bruising side to it. And I think that's, like, an interesting touch. So what you want to do is, you want to dodge his attacks, and when he gets close, he's going to have this green dot on him. They just want to be striking. So whenever he stops here, you can get a couple quick shots in as he's going to be blocking himself. If you see the health meter, I'm kind of slowly whittling it down anyways. Um, luckily, because of the boundary system in this game, you can't actually fall off by just trying to punch him. And then again, just like clockwork here, follow him right around um, and try to get those hits in when you can. So he's standing right there. The second you can get him down to that last little sliver or like right where that sliver is in the health bar, uh, then you're actually fine. Um, I'm purposely running circles around these guys because I would like to see Eggman take out his own troops. Uh, but one more hit here. And now we're good for a quick time event here. 
Um, it's been a pretty consistent thing you're going to be seeing here um, across this boss battle and then the next two boss battles is, you know, as awesome as it is, um, it actually turns into a pretty good amount of uh, quick time events. So press the button on the right time, some event will happen, Eggman shoots a drill at us for some reason, and, you know, we dodge it and he ends up drilling himself in the chest there, like, you know, like stupid things like that. But here we just rip off, by mashing the A button here, we're actually going to rip off a bit of his machine there. Not really do all that much damage, but just, you know, show the idea that we are physically denting him and all that. Um, all you want to do here is just get out of the middle. Because he's going to shoot a drill through this. And this drill is just going to, uh, you know, destroy the foothold you're on. So move to the side here so you're not in the same place as you're going to shoot. Um, and now you're going to get to a new area here, a rock area. He's going to shoot a little freeze blast in the middle here. Just jump over it. Not that bad. Uh, if, as long, if you land into it, it's just like getting one of those freezer bots that... Uh, just will it freeze you in place for a second there. Nothing too bad here. More enemies here. I would say, again, these are slow enough where like they're not posing a huge threat. Stay close to them so they take some hits here. And you kind of immobilize them in a sense. Um, nothing too crazy yet, though. Um, Eggman's going to come back. Take the shots you can get at him here. Um, there's different attacks. I'm not as great at them, but there's different attacks you can do where you are actually, you can do a lot more damage than just the like kind of quick, two quick hits that I've been doing. Um, I will fully admit, I'm not the right person for it. So I kind of do this little other strategy, which is just kind of camp close to him like this. And in a way, absorb the, co like, you know, use his shield to your advantage. Um, jump over this. Luckily, his own guys take damage from uh, his own attacks. So just like that, all the other guys are actually just gone. And here I'm going to just attack him really quick here. Almost, almost, so close. Uh, just need to hit him one more time probably to hit up, uh, make that other sequence happen. Uh, is he just destroying it? Okay, he is. So maybe I guess the next one is just through a different seat, like different stage? Yeah, that would sound right. Um, anyways, just dodge. Nothing too crazy here. Collect the rings as you go. You're going to want them for the end. Um... Again, nothing particularly insane here about like dodging him. You never really feel like you're in that much trouble. Uh, one of the hardest things amounts to just jumping in midair to get over this icicle. So again, not really the biggest deal ever. Um, okay, so we got him down to the next sliver here. So quick time event about to start. Okay, here we go. And I want to say this might be us taking him down here. I don't think that there's actually like a third one that we have to be doing or like some other like attack. So here again, he's gonna drill himself. You know, this is it actually. Um, so from here, this is actually gonna be really cool. So we're gonna punch to detach him a little bit here. Give another punch. And then mashing the Y button here. Gonna punch down, crack the glass here. We're going to grab him out and just throw him away as the Egg Dragoon explodes. And I love just the beastly roar at the end of it. They're like, ha! And we got an achievement here called Hard Day's Night. Uh, let's see what that one is for. Um, cleared all the Werehog stages. That's cool. So we cleared all the like side stages too we had to with the Werehog. That's actually really cool. Uh, so we got a rank S for that one, which is awesome. Again, I'm just going to put these into strength. Nothing's really going to change right now, especially because we don't actually use the Werehog for the rest of the game anyways. Um, I know. Wait, what? Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, spoilers for the next two minutes. Um, so again, now they actually jump to what I would call like their amazing cutscenes. So there you can see just the individual hairs on the mustache, like so well done graphically. So here what we see is that we thought we beat Eggman, we thought that's it. Look at Sonic's fur just rustle in the wind there. It's just, it's so well done. Like, oh my god. And, uh, and Chip, too. But here is Dark Gaia. 
Eggman had said that through his technology that he actually restored Dark Gaia before he should have been restored. Because as you can understand, the longer the continents were left out, the stronger Dark Gaia could get. So if we actually destroyed or restored more continents quicker, Dark Gaia may not have actually revived itself. Dark Gaia, as every villain ever is, does not want to listen to Eggman, so kicks him away and just says, screw it, you're not in charge of me. Eggman's like, what? But this always works. Never, actually. Um, but here, though, just the the hair. Like, look at Chip's tail, like how it just rustles in the wind. Like, these elements are unbelievable. And, like, this is a game that like came out, at this point, like seven years ago. For them to have this kind of capability of just making these cutscenes look this gorgeous is really just unbelievable in my eyes. It's just, it's so well done. But here we see Dark Eye absorbs our Werehog powers. And as a result, actually got stronger. It looked like it evolved. It grew some eyes. It looked more ominous. And Sonic looks afraid now. He's saying, run, run. And like, he has no idea what to do. He's very terrified. Chip really steps up here, says, I'm going to block this. I'm going to save you, Sonic. But now this is really cool. So as Chip is Light Gaia, Chip has strong powers as well. Chip powers he didn't really fully know about until we had restored the Sixth Temple and he regained his memory. But basically what we're seeing now is that all the Chaos Emeralds that we left in all the other temples are actually... First of all, look at how good this looks. Chunon looks amazing. Just that idea of like the temple floating above is great. And these temples just disappeared. Where'd they go? Oh my god, they're all coming towards us in this burning light here. You can see where this lava field. So there's this really cool thing that happens here. Which is that Chip calls all of the temples to him. And each temple is a collection of land and just earth put together. You know, structures, dirt, all these things combined. But what Chip is actually going to do is... He's going to somehow combine these into some gigantic, like, best thing I can describe it as is, like, Power Rangers, when you would, like, put together the different, uh, like, Morphtrons, or, like, whatever they were called, and, like, you'd build, like, the big, you know, like, one together that you'd, like, all team up in. And Chip actually builds, like, this temple, golem, you know, statue figure, if you will, that, like, you know, now we can use to try to fight against Dark Gaia. And I think that's such a cool thing. Um... So I will fully say that while this is the second to last boss battle, in my mind, this is actually one of the more interesting ones. Well, not one of the, this is the most interesting boss battle in the game. Um, because it combines a lot of interesting components to it. And I think gives you one, um, a huge respect for Chip, which I think for Chip, uh, you know, joining the entire time, he seemed kind of useless for a lot of the for a lot of the game. You know, he would have the camera, he would hold it around, like he would be like Sonic, and he would like give you the hints as you go. But like for most of the game, he wouldn't really do all that much. Now he builds this amazing robot, the not robot, but you know, like you know, uh, like stone statue that you're using to try to go over to Gaia, and I think it blends a really interesting idea of Sonic in here as well, to a point where I think I really do appreciate. Um, you know, both characters, and I think the use of both characters. So this starts out with is a kind of a slow start, which is I'm going to hold this X button to boost over kind of slowly. I think the fact that it looks so slowly is just meant to show like just how far away you really start from him. Um, you don't get hit by these, um, you know, like blocks. He's going to charge up this beam, hold the left bumper to guard, and you're going to take damage, but as soon as you get outside of it, you're fine. If you hold the guard button, you won't be taking that much damage anyways. Versus if I didn't hold the guard button there, I would have lost about half my health. So here, just go straight. These two are going to go left and right of you. And then before we can pick up the next one, we should be there, I want to say. Yep. So now here, quick time events. Never seen these before. Really cool, though. Like, rock'em, sock'em robots. Like, just big robot getting close, trying to beat the crap out of Dark Gaia, one punch at a time. I think it's actually like a pretty interesting design choice, just because I would say that they've never had anything like similar to this as far as like this game is thought of. So like, again, you're having a big boss battle that takes a risk, and like, I think that's really, really cool. Um, so what we're gonna see here though is that Dark Gaia is gonna get pissed off with us punching him so much. He's gonna hold us really tight. 
he's gonna say like I'm gonna hold you here and I'm gonna slowly like, just you know infest you right here and like you know just make you like you know, you know unable to do anything and just like hold you in place and then Q Sonic realizing that Chip and the stone statue are in trouble realizing that hey I actually have to run into dark guy's arm here nope uh, jump across and really uh, damn it I always fuck that part up um, and navigate through um, dark Gaia here and you know get to the end where I can actually shoot over it and attack dark Gaia to help chip and I think that's like a really really cool thing you know if I don't die so much um, <laughs> All right, this time we're gonna get it. I'm feeling it. I'm really, really feeling it, which means nothing, but totally feeling it. Um, this time we're gonna jump. There we go. I don't even care. That's fine. We're gonna slide underneath, jump over. Good. And now, A B B, and here we go. And here we're just gonna hit the eye. And by hitting Gaia's main eye enough, Gaia just pushes us off and says. No, ow, ow, get away, get away, I can't take this. And as such, we free chip, and in a sense, now what we do is repeat the cycle. Now Gaia, though, is about one-third hurt, which is big. Um, which, again, is a very great sign of just how many times we probably have to do this to Gaia. I'll give you a hint, it's three. Um... Not getting hit by these meteors is a big deal because you want to save that health for later. Um, you restore your health bar each time you get down to Gaia and can beat him up and like fully complete it. But um, the game is also kind of nice. Um, if you do die, or you know, like you lose your health on the way over. Uh, another way, if there's never an like an, uh, a way to get away there, you can just hold either left trigger or right trigger to uh, punch the, the uh, boulders, or like the meteors coming at you. Um, so that's super helpful too. So once you get closer here, what I recommend is just charging this punch, because there's usually gonna be one that comes right at you on the second and third runs here. Um, yep, punch. And I think I should be close enough here where he can't throw this one in time, yep. So here again, quick time events on this. Nothing too crazy from that perspective. Um, and again, um, good, nothing crazy here, nothing crazy. Um, I do love the idea that he could charge and just hit us, but we're going to give him the world's slowest punches ever just to try to hit him right back. And then, boom. <laughs> and then he's going to grab us. And now when he grabs us, we know that, one, we're done with the quick time events, which is awesome. And two... Um, we know that we're back to the Sonic stage of this. Um, again, which is awesome. Um, this one is really interesting. Um, this one takes a couple different perspectives, which I appreciate. Like, you mix up the 2D. And again, it, it really keeps playing to the strengths of the game, which is we start off with a 3D, like, let me run forward and see what happens kind of stage. And then this one was a nice 2D kind of jumping around. In my opinion, a lot easier than the first one, just because it's not as fast as the actions you need. And then the third one will be a uh, 3D again. Um, so with this one, you've seen how it looks when I approach him twice. I'm actually going to just approach him this time um, and cut over to it, just because it's a waste of your guys' time to actually see uh, you have, like me have to do this again, because it's a very slow crawl over. So I'm just going to cut over to when we've approached and we're starting the quick time events. All right, come on, come on, we can make it. We can make it in time. I'm boosting. Oh no, there's a bow! Okay, we got it anyways, awesome. Um, <laughs> scary. Very, very scary. This is gonna move a lot faster now. Um, so, gotta be just very, very on top of it because if we miss any of these, he's gonna blast us back and we're gonna have to restart it all anyways. Um, not restart the entire boss battle, but just restart the third leg of it. Um, so, very, very attuned right now to those quick time events. Grab me, please grab me. Damn it, I thought you were gonna grab me and I almost relaxed. Um, please grab me, pretty please. Thank you, thank you. I know it's really funny for like, in this story I'm sure the grabbing part is actually like the scariest part for Chip and Sonic. For me it's a huge relief because I know I get back to the Sonic stage 
where I know that I'm guaranteed to keep trying on that one at least. Um, so this one is, unlike the other ones, this one is very, very tight on time. Um, all you want to do is slide across here. You're going to want to stay in the left here, because on the left here, through this boost, you're going to get an extra life. That will let you just keep trying this, no matter how many times you really have to, which is huge. Um, around the 37 second mark, uh, you're going to get blasted off. Um, yep, right there, damn it. I was right at the end, and I got blasted. Um, that doesn't actually mean that we need to restart the entire uh, yeah, run towards Gaia. It actually just means that all we have to do is just, damn it, um, restart this one part of, you know, trying to do the run up again. Um, given how I got blasted right there, I think the chances and how I got hit there, the chances of me doing this are basically none. But again, focusing on the left here, just so I don't lose that life. Um, sucks. But happens, I guess. Um, yeah, we're definitely not making it. We're gonna hit like the 37 seconds before we even get to like the slanted, yep. And right there, yep, that's funny. So again, the second the clock hits like 37 seconds-ish, like, I will fully admit I don't know what the exact time is for it, but just eyeing it enough different times, it seems when it's close to 37 seconds. So as a result, I just kind of keep that in my mind as like, at least an internal threshold. Um, I think if you are crossing across there, um, that section there with all the springs, with around, um, you know, like 15, 16 seconds, you're probably in time with what you want. The first time I did this, you know, like the first run we just did, damn it, that, that ruined it for me. Yep, that ruined it for me too. Um, there's gonna be cannon, there's gonna be like, basically like five, you know, like, not, en like energy balls, I think is the best way to describe it. Like aimed at you to try to slow down your progress. If you get hit by any one of those, it sucks. Um, or if you, you know, you just suck, like I just did. Um, jump. See, like right now I'm like three seconds behind the time, so this is just not gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna give it like one more try with you guys. If this doesn't happen, uh, I'm just going, yeah, this isn't, this one's not happening for sure. Um, let me just jump off to the side, can I? Pretty please? Damn it. Can I, can you just kill me? Pretty please? Yay. Um, so if this one doesn't work out, I'm actually just gonna cut to where we get it to work. Um, just because I can imagine seeing me do the same one over and over and over again is probably not the most exciting thing for you guys. And I think especially because there's an entire other boss battle still to go, um, want to make sure this doesn't get too, too long on you guys as far as the end video. So let's try this. This is a good time. I'm actually really liking this. I'm just praying right now that we don't get hit. I had to say something, right? Oh my God, I got hit and we just, yep, yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna cut to uh, when we were doing the, uh, basically the quick button sequence, quick time, quick time event here, um, damn it, to try to get on to Dark Gaia. So I'll see you guys there. Oh, funny, that was actually great. The very first one, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to be like worrying about it. I didn't actually have to do any other attempts. Um, we got it on the, like that first try, after I said I would just cut and find it there. Um, so this time again, hit him in the eye, hit him in the eye, hit him in the eye. Sonic does an extra special little, like, extra kick at the end. And then, as a result of this, now that we go to the now loading, we just beat Dark Gaia. Um, I know, super great, and it makes you think that that's what the entire game was worth, is just fighting that guy to have that kind of a really vicious, rough competition. I know, totally worth it. Um... I'm being facetious, obviously, in the sense, but in all honesty, like it did seem like a kind of simplistic way of beating him, albeit a pretty interesting way of like, how they really mix up the dynamic of Sonic really getting the hits on the gargantuan creature, and I think like this, you know, big stone statue that Chip brought out, allowing us to, uh, you know, really fight Dark Eye like head to head at similar size. Um, so here, what we see though is before Dark Eye is kind of going down just spreading all of the mist again or like his aura or whatever it is 
and he's encompassing the world in just darkness. Everyone, whether they had day before or not, now all of a sudden you're in this purple, hazy sky of just darkness and despair, and everyone is freaking out. Everyone thinks the world is doomed, and poor Sonic is just there saying, it's just me. It either works or it doesn't. Um, and then, as a result of this, as we're going to come over here to back to Shamar, um, we're going to check in with, God, I want to say it's Amy? So this is a really long loading screen. This is actually a surprisingly long loading screen for this game. Um, anyways, yep, Amy. So Amy's looking around, like, in just kind of very pure confusion. And the professor here is me proclaiming that Dark Gaia has actually regained its true power. The beast is complete. So for what he just said, that actually means that we didn't fight the complete whole Gaia, which is a really interesting thought. So basically what this is saying is that Gaia, what we fought there, was not the big deal, was not the biggest thing, but also it means that Gaia can just be harder. Um, we didn't get everything there was, and we have not truly saved the day if Gaia has evolved and gotten even stronger. Now, I'm a little annoyed at this loading screen because it foreshadows it for you, where you see that you're supersonic. I kind of like the surprise of not knowing that it's going to happen, even though I kind of know it's going to happen because it happens in all of them. Um, but, as you can see here, yes, we are going to turn into supersonic. Um, but not before Gaia undergo, Dark Gaia undergoes a very interesting transformation. He's going to grow more arms, which I find really interesting. And in between, what I can only assume are like tons of tongues, he's going to open more eyes. So now he looks really fucking freaky. <laughs> He has like six arms, he looks ten times more like an alien. It's a genuinely really scary look, and I kinda get it. Sonic though, stares this down and knows full, full well what he needs to do. He calls on the power of the Chaos Emeralds to surround him. And to turn into our favorite Super Saiyan, Goku! Super Sonic! And now, with Supersonic and Chip and his stone statue, we are now going to take on the final boss of the game, Perfect Dark Gaia. And as you can see, there's a shield. Now, I'm going to keep quiet for a second here as I'm going to get closer and collect my rings. Big part here, actually, before I get quiet is you need to make sure that you collect rings. So start off a little slower and just find out where those rings are because once that you find them, just boost through the area and you'll collect all of them and your health will be fully restored here. Um, what I was going to say is, I'm going to keep quiet for a second here because I want you guys to hear this music. This music is unbelievable. It's a song you can get on iTunes called Perfect Dark Gaia. And I think this song is like super inspirational. It's super much of the, you know, nothing will beat me, nothing will take me down. I think it's just an awesome thing. So Chip jumps through the field, tries to take on Dark Gaia to distract its focus. As we are going to come around, there are seven of these, I like to call them dragons, but they call them snake things. Um, they're going to be around here, basically making this force field possible. What you want to do is, whenever one of them is exposed, boost into it and come right back and keep boosting into it. Four hits will take down one of the snake heads, and as a result, um, we'll take it out of commission. Um, there are seven of these in total, and the second you take down all seven of them, the shield goes down and Gaia is revealed. And you can get to the very end of this boss battle. Um, in a weird way, like it's a very different type of boss battle. But it doesn't feel all that challenging either, which is, maybe it's just a consistent idea of like, you know, S Supersonic is just that awesome that 
Oh god, and I'm losing a lot of health right now. Um, as I'm talking about how it's not that challenging, that's funny. But maybe it's just the idea that like you know, supersonic is just that great that like comparatively maybe it's not that bad. Um, I'm waiting for this snake head to come back here. Um, there we go, good. Got it, and got it. Come on, one more. Good. And now I believe there's only two left. But I also do not have much health. Good, so there you are. Got you. Each time you hit them, they're t temporarily stunned, so they can't just go away. Which is why I keep boosting right back, because I want to get there before they can escape again. Um, I want to say this is the last one, because if it is, that's huge. Okay, yep, that's the last one, awesome. Um, shield goes away, and now what we can do is actually help Chip take on Dark Gaia here. Um, so now Dark Gaia is going to actually have all six hands hold on to Chip, and our favorite quick time events come back. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take out one hand at a time, just to be able to free Chip. Um, very cool visual shots of this, so like you just charging in and really kind of breaking his wrist or whatever it is to get him to let go of the grip. Just, you know, like unleashing those hits. The quick time events here aren't that long. I would say more than anything, the hardest like, bat like boss battle I think was the last one we did. But in a lot of ways, this is meant to feel like that triumphant, nothing's gonna beat us moment. So it's why um, you're gonna see you know, this just awesome display of like Sonic being overpowered. Quick time event, come on. My hand is cramping, my hand is cramping. Got it, okay. <laughs> um, Chip is able to survive this, goes in for the punch, and I'm gonna no like be a huge stickler for a second. I hate this because I say, Le he says, leave it to me. And I control nothing. I'm not moving him, I'm not doing anything. Sonic just warps through him and does the final hit without me. I wish I could just personally run up at least to his eye, like he just did, to then jump right through Perfect Dark Gaia. And with that final hit of jumping through his eye, and now we come back to the really great animations. Um, as you can see, just green ooze spewing out of him, falls into the lava, and just nothing left. He is done. There's no more light, there's no more life to him. Gaia just fades back into the lava. We haven't killed Gaia. They make that very clear in a second here. But what we've done is subdued Gaia to the point where he will rest, or he, it, she, whatever, will rest for eons to come, and the world will not be in danger for that. Chip saves Sonic, because Sonic passes out there and almost dies. Which they make it, you know, this very cute little moment. But I'm like, Sonic almost died. That was kind of intense. Um, the mist clears over the world, exposing the light once again. And as we're going to see, the content is slowly going to draw back in to a close here. Chunan is happy. Missouri is back to the day. Not the state. The village, guys. Come on. Spagonia is overjoyed. The light is back. We're all saved. Halaska, we can sled again. I'm so happy. This is great. It was so cold without the little bit of sun we have here. I was freezing even with my parka on. They don't care about Empire City or, or uh, Adabad, apparently, or Apatos. But, you know, it is what it is. Eggman now I got blasted away before we started to fight the guy, as you remember. Um, and, you know, it starts off with this kind of nice part where, like, you know, he's saying that you can begin your efforts anew. And, you know, like, but just remember, you know, like, even, you know, like, just remember, like, hey, all, everything you just did had no impact. All you, had to, all you did was just miserably screw up. Eggman kicks and misses. And now the robot runs away. And look at this run by Eggman. That is the creepiest run I've ever seen. Just swiping his arms down, kicking his arms up. If you ever saw anyone approach you like that, you would just immediately be more afraid of them and just be like, what in the world did I do to upset you so much? I am so, so sorry. Please, please don't do this to me. Um, 
So here we come back into Shamar, and the sun is, is shining, everything is at peace once again, and the professor will remark, and I think I caught a glimpse of an eye for a second there, crazy, his eyebrows cover them all the time, we've been saved by a miracle, we've been saved by a miracle, and Amy's like, nope, it's just my Sonic, there's no way he would let something like that happen, and right you are. And now there's this really interesting part, which is we cannot live with, without the night. We must sleep. We must all rest. Darkness is a part of our world just the same as light. So the idea that the idea of this game was not to kill Dark Gaia. It was just to restore the balance of light and darkness. And restore. And the cycle will continue. They're going to say this. The eons from now, Dark Gaia will come back. But then it will be the job of Light Gaia to make it, you know, reside back. The dark will always want to take more than its fair share, and the light will always battle it back down. But in the end, it's a very interesting story they told. And I would say, like, it's one where not fully beating an opponent, you know, like, you know, you, you vanquish him, you defeat him, he, you know, he falls. But I wouldn't say that you obliterate him, he, you don't kill your enemy. And it makes a lot of sense in this uh in this game, and I really applaud them in the end. That like I think there's a lot of this game that, as I've talked about, like there are different things that can be improved. And I think like just like any game, there's obviously things that, in retrospect, seem better than in others. But they did such an interesting job with this game. They built a story that really touched you, and I think really spoke to just a lot of the joy that people had with Sonic. And really mixed in this amazing new character with Chip, added in this new emotion, and I think really gave this purpose to light and dark, and I think put a story that is bigger than Sonic, in a sense. And I think as a result, you really had a new game that made people not only you know like laugh and enjoy it, but really sit back and just enjoy these moments where everything is just soft, and Chip is saying his goodbye to Sonic, and you really feel bad that it's goodbye. Chip tosses Sonic out from underneath the closing continent as Chip and the Gaia Temples sink into the lava, saying that our time is done. We are okay with this, and we will stay sealed away until Dark Gaia rises again and we are needed. It really makes you feel like this is it, Chip is gone, and this adventure has really come full circle to the point where you are just finished. And I don't know, like I would say like Sonic 06 had a story where when you finish it, you were like kind of, what in the world was this? Why do I care? Morris's this game, I think, really did a great job of making me care about the story, making the story not too long, keeping it with its strengths. It was all Sonic. It wasn't Silver or Shadow. And it wasn't repeating the same levels and things like that. But it was so great it, with the beautiful graphics it did, how bright and colorful it was, how detailed it was. But really, just a true sense of... There was a real friendship between Chip and Sonic that didn't feel fake to me. And really coming full circle here, Sonic lands right where he started the game, sees the bracelet that Chip was wearing, and decides that I am going to hold on to this as a way of remembering my friend, Chip. And... Just like the just like with the other game, or not the other game, but the beginning of the game, Sonic looks at the sunset, and unlike turning into a werehog, Sonic is now free to just run and be himself. And I'm gonna just stop talking for a second because I want you guys to hear this song. Because to me, this is really the perfect song about how nothing can ever stop you from doing what you want. The song is called Endless Possibilities.
And guys, this has been my presentation of Sonic Unleashed. We did it. We beat the game. It's unbelievable to say. It's so awesome. And I love how they're going to do this little wrap-up part where they have all these pictures of you and Tails and Chip and just the memories along the way that I think really made it just such a fun experience. So if I really had to wrap up here, I would say that this game, in my mind, really brought Sonic back to what was what has made it a fantastic franchise. It prioritized speed for a lot of the day stages. It was so interesting from so many different perspectives. It added new characters. It had a new and very genuine story that didn't feel, you never felt like you didn't like the story. Like I would say like in Sonic 06, I consistently looked at the princess and I was like, why do I have to care about you? Why does Sonic have to care about you? But here, I saw Chip, I saw Dark Gaia, and it felt so natural to say that of course you want to be friends with Chip. He's so happy-go-lucky and fun. And of course you want to stop Dark, Dark Gaia. He's so evil. And like, everything about it felt natural. They brought in a new type of hedgehog. You were a werehog for like half of the game. You slowed down and turned into a beat-em-up. And yeah, sometimes the levels were a little too slow, but I would say that the I never felt like any two Werehog stages were the same. And I always felt, it almost felt like I was playing a different game whenever I did a, a night stage versus a day stage. And I think getting to seamlessly really weave those two together was such an awesome thing because it gave me that many more areas of just awesome, interesting gameplay. And in the end, I mean, this is an entire series about having fun and really I think gaining a lot of perspective from Sonic about letting the belief that you have in yourself never stop you, like always empower you to pursue what you love, never letting the doubt overtake you and like make you into something that you're not. And they really showed them the sense that Sonic turned into a completely different creature during night. He never let it change him. He never let it change anything about him. He was still himself. And I think there's a really big part to that, which is that if we all have that perspective that we are who we are, no one else should be able to change that for us unless they, we allow them to change it for us in a positive or potentially negative way. We are our own person. And I think that there's something that's so cool about being you know, the master of your own destiny. But I would say that if there's ever been a character who's shown me that even at times when I want to doubt myself or things when I think, times when I think I'm not good enough has given me a reason to say, yes, I am. And yes, I can be good enough. And yes, I deserve this. And yes, I can fight for this. It's Sonic. And to that regard, like I would always say that I am just thankful for him and for these games. And I think for the experience they've really allowed me to have growing up. And to that point, like I really do hope you guys enjoyed this series. For me, this was a ton of fun playing this series. Um, the level design is so great, so vibrant. I had so much fun with the gameplay. It's fast, it's hard to control, but at the same point, it was a real challenge. I would say that there was a point where like, I never felt like I was playing a game that had an easy mode. I really felt like this was a difficult game to be good at. And I would admit that by the idea that, hey, there's certain levels I'm just not gonna get S ranks at. And I knew that going into it. But I would say that it was just so interesting to see so many different areas, so many different worlds. They all felt so unique. We were away from this, you know, Soliana kind of bill that we had in Sonic 06, and everything just felt creative in this game. And to that point, like, it's just been so much fun playing this and really playing this with you guys. Um, so guys, I'm gonna let the credits keep rolling here, but I wanna say that it has really been a pleasure doing this series with you guys. And I think um, I love doing these Sonic games. There's a very real chance this is probably the last Sonic Let's Play that I do, just because of uh, some game console con uh, capabil um, not capabilities, just uh, like connectivity issues. So it's harder for me to be able to record on a Wii or even going back old school to a GameCube. Um, I'm always happy to do other looks at the current Sonic games we have played. If there's any ever any kind of like 
walkthroughs you want me to do, even just revisiting Sonic 06 for my own displeasure, I'm more than happy to. But I think as far as the Sonic franchise, this is going to be my last, or I guess the second last video. We're going to do that one where we walk through kind of the end of the, like, actually, you know, like post-game stuff in the, like for the next episode. But I just wanted you guys to know that for me, Sonic is the reason why I wanted to get into doing a Let's Play. And I think really gave me this idea that not only is this a game that I believe, especially in the case of Sonic 06, that I'm pretty good at, but it's a game that I think is really, it really resonates with a lot of people. And I think the story and the belief in the, especially the character of Sonic resonates with so many people. So to me, it's been just an unbelievable pleasure being able to share that experience with you guys, going through Sonic 06 and going now through Sonic Unleashed to a point where I felt like I really got to give credit and give a lot of validation to my own childhood in some regards and really the games that made you know me fall in love with Sonic more so. Um, so guys, I know the credits are still going, but I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, oh, I love the hot dog and burger pick there. Um, but guys, this has been Sly Sonic 7. Thank you guys so much for watching this Let's Play. I'll see you guys next time with post-game content. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next Let's Play.